Welcome to Superior Profit Monday Morning Market Meet, 28 January 2019. I'm Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I'll not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me or the company or the products, trading products that we offer, you may visit the site superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. How fast can I read that? As usual, this session is meant as a demonstration of top-down, bottom-up or insight-based identification of trade or trading opportunities and also sharing some ideas how to use the queue systems efficiently, effectively, and elegantly. You may figure some of them out yourselves, and you may watch these sessions to learn some of the others. And you may ask me any question about the system or a stock. We'll be happy to look at them. Let's move on with the live system. Let's look at the world markets first. A X J O. I'm using Q Global because that allows me to look at the world market using the default weekly daily template. That is the at a glance template. We can identify trading opportunities at the right edge only a few seconds. Now this usually on Mondays we are able to see Monday's bar for the Australian market, but I see here 25th Jan. That means for some reason, Australian market is closed. So we don't have Monday's bar. We have last Friday's bar. The weekly candle is bullish color and bullish shape. Daily is going up, but it is right at the white direction line. In fact, it is between the yellow and the white direction line. The exact same situation that we have for most of the USA market ETFs. Australian market, we can see also recover. In fact, for one, two, three, four, five, you can see for five weeks in a row. Same as it happened in the USA market. I wouldn't be buying here because the wide direction line is right above the current price. We didn't have Monday's market. We'll see how the market does tomorrow. Hang Seng Index, Hong Kong. Here we have Monday's candle. Let me confirm that. 28th Jan, so this is Monday's candle. Opened higher, opened with a gap up then closed lower, though closed higher than Friday. We know that because the activity bar is in green color. The daily candle shape is very indecisive. Prior to that, Hong Kong market also went up for four weeks. Now the incomplete week is indecisive. Monday's candle is indecisive. China market. Shanghai Shenzhen Index, CSI 300. Also recovered, not as strongly as Australia or not even as strong as Hong Kong market. Today's candle, if anything, is bearish, not bullish. There was a memory resistance. Price tried to go above that, but closed down solid body upper tail and closed lower than Friday. So it is a bearish candle. 
just to make sure that this is Monday's candle. Yes, it is 20th Jan, Monday's candle. India, Nifty index, Nifty 50, bearish. It was moving sideways for a while. One of the Indian traders was talking to me and he was saying the economy is very good and etc. Of course, I am not an economist. I told the market is moving sideways. That was then. Now it has broken below the memory resistance support, broken below the white direction line and yellow direction line. In a way, it may be still inside the range. But if it breaks below memory support, usually, not always, but usually, it breaks below the rectangle as well. The trend lines are very effective way of identifying breakouts before the box breaks down. So I will not be suggesting buying in the Indian market right now. By the way, this used to be the strongest of all the global markets that we were studying in the Monday morning meetings. UK, they have uncertainty about Brexit. It was not very strong last couple of weeks and this week is not strong. The beginning, this is Monday. Yes, 20th Jan, Monday. So this is not a strong beginning. In fact, if you were tracking FTSE regularly, which you would do if you were trading in the UK market, on this candle, you would be looking for shorting opportunities because price came to the declining yellow direction line, gave a bearish shape candle, fell down, made a lower high, fell down again, the traffic light candle color was red. We can call it traffic light, whatever, but the color is red by the way, we do call it traffic light candle color. Red is bearish, just like in case of traffic light. So looking at red, falling down from memory, going below the yellow direction line, white direction line is already above, and the weekly also, the memory resistance line was already there. Price came precisely to that level and reverse. So you would start to think about taking a short trade on this red candle and on the magenta candle using fine-tuned real-time chart, you could actually take the short trade. For that day, you would put stop just above early range high, minuscule stop because the Real-time fine-tuned chart is on five-minute interval in the morning session. Afternoon session, we suggest using 10-minute interval. I think this day would have given us an early range breakout technique short entry in the morning session using five-minute interval, minuscule stop. We could book some profit by the end of the day and then move stop to the recent high if we are holding partial position. That position is still in place. Looks bearish in weekly, looks bearish in daily. Normally, I don't look at the USA market in the beginning of Monday morning meeting, but let's do that today. I wanted to explain one thing. And now I am switching to TradeStation, QElite. You will see the indicators are slightly different from what you see on your computer because I have the beta release, some new changes are coming. I shared some of them in Twitter, Facebook, and I will explain them in today's session as I use them. I explained them in the weekly market roundup as well. This is E-mini. I mentioned in the market roundup that over longer period, the market is in downtrend, no doubt. Doesn't mean we are going to take short in this area. But if price came to some resistance, which could be this weekly memory resistance, where it didn't come to yet, or it could be this yellow direction line, white direction line, where it came to and paused, or it could be the invisible support resistance, 
we call a natural reversal point the bearish headwind signal then we could start looking for shorting opportunities it has memory resistance if it goes below the yellow direction line you may consider shorting it will the weekly be of magenta color if so then we will have a go with flow trend following short trade setup if not can you still short it of course you can but question would be why bother this is s p 500 there are 500 stocks in this index why don't we drill down into spy find the weakest fundamental stocks then see which of them has industry that is weak or weakening that is decelerating on qa and then look for a go with flow short trade setup in them i'm sure if spy is toppling over from here you will find better go with flow short candidate in one of the constituent stocks and those stocks will almost inevitably move faster than spy because spy is an average of 500 shares the point that i wanted to explain if you look at the weekly candle it went up for one two three four weeks on the fifth week it paused and what was the weekly market roundup heading of that week the one that i post every week the heading was wait and see before taking next trade that was the weekly market roundup name and price stop what was the heading of this week's market roundup continued watch and see suggested market so far okay this is not even the market session regular session but market is not going up it seems the market is watching the weekly market roundups but that is not true it is the opposite i am trying to listen to the market why i could tell on this week that it is time to be cautious was because of the market breadth analysis and the overbought oversold analysis the complete analysis that we carry out in the weekly market roundup and the complete analysis that you can do every day if you want because you have the exact same tools that i have now if you look at these days overnight market bar it seems that price has not gone below friday's low that is true but remember this friday's candle includes the overnight market sometimes it is good to see that is price falling below the regular market that means if we were having spy chart on our computer has the future fallen enough to go below the low of the spy daily candle of friday which would be somewhere here this is spy daily candle we don't have spy running now but if we look at es if we just look at the daily chart we think that it is not going down much actually which is true if you look at the complete futures bar now i'm going to expand it and change to the fine tune chart I'm using the hot keys and it draws the pivot lines. I want to include longer period, so let me change it to 10 minute interval. All the pivot lines are drawn. This cyan color upper line is early range high, cyan color lower line is early range low, and the red pivot line is previous day's low but it is not the whole candle slow it is the low of the regular hours and now you see where price is in the overnight market it is below the regular hours low so you can imagine most likely if it was spy if price is going to open at this point 
then SPY is going to open below previous day's low, so that will be a gap down open. That is the point that I wanted to mention that using the pivot lines on a 24 hour market, like the futures, e mini futures, you can get more insight than you can get just from looking at the daily candle. It is below previous day's low if you consider regular market hours. That is so far bearish and it seems it is going to open with a gap down open if it is a gap down open what do we do we look for a gap trade setup if we are trading the futures or maybe options on futures or for lower leveraged instruments the etfs or the options on etfs for example spy Q -Q -Q. If we are going to long or short any of the futures or ETFs, we are going to look for the strongest for going long and the weakest for going short. How do we know they are weakest or strongest? We don't go for sector analysis, industry analysis or fundamental analysis because these are market averages. We look at multiple charts side by side. And let me just paste this window. Normally, I look at all the four futures during market hours to get an idea of what is strong, what is weak. Actually, I have a workspace created for that. And it is nothing, just copying, pasting the window several times. And it may be easier if I just open that workspace. Give me one minute, please. Nothing special. This is a workspace I created where I put all the four futures together. side by side. If you don't want to look at Russell 2000, you can look at only YM, NQ and ES. This gives a pretty good idea of where the market is going and you can decide your other trade entries accordingly. For example, if the market is going up very strongly, you would not immediately enter a short trade that you had in mind. Or if market is falling sharply, you would not take the long trade that you had in mind immediately. You will wait. You will wait probably for market to go down and then start to recover and then look for a long entry in the plant stock. Now let's go back to previous days. Open. I change to 10 minute interval. Previous days open is the beginning of the blue line and trade station has a feature where I can align all the instruments. So this is the beginning of all the instruments. Now let's imagine that on Friday we are looking at all these four instruments, futures, market futures, and we are thinking is the market weak or strong because we might have planned for some short trades and some long trades, let's say not day trades, let's say swing trades. Now we see that market opened and then market opened at the blue line for Russell 2000, early range high, early range low form. Early range high, early range low form automatically for all the instruments. We are not looking at the percentage. Sometimes the opening move may distort the percentage move. We are not looking at that. We are looking at the pivot lines and how price is moving relative to the pivot lines. And of course, we saw that all of them broke above the early range high. When that happened, if we had a short trade in mind, we'll hold on. We'll not take the short trade immediately. We'll hold on, then we'll see prices going up, then starting to move sideways for Russell 2000, for YM going up and starting to go down. For NQ, 
starting to go down more slowly than YM and SPY similar to NQ. If we had a short trade in mind when we saw this candle in YM, then we will start thinking of initiating the short trade or here or here or here or here because if we had a short trade swing trade in mind we decided that best based on weakness of that stock fundamental weakness industry weakness technical weakness when the market was going up most likely the stock would not drop not much actually but when the market starts to pause and topple over at these points that weak stock is most likely to drop as well and we will use the intraday fine tune chart for that stock to take a short trade at that time what trade setup shall we use we probably will not be able to use the early range breakout we can but let me let me explain both the possible scenarios in one case i didn't have any short trade plan for last friday let's just open any chart let's just open apple and we synchronize okay it didn't it, it would not be a good candidate for short trade what about mrk would you have okay okay let's look at this suppose 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 we had a short trade plan in mrk for swing trading mark in the beginning it created opening mark early range low early range high is same as opening price and it dropped but we saw that the market was going up we are not going to short immediately instead when the market went up the stock went up this is what would happen most of the time so you can wait patiently when the market is starting to topple over let me try to synchronize again workspace here you see when market was starting to roll over long magenta candles in all the market futures we had a very low risk short opportunity in mrk based on the bear release signal meaning it was overbought all along and then the bulls gave away the bear release or stretch release in the bearish direction came but we will we would not short then we are always looking for a logical point to short and that would be when this candle closed decisively below a major pivot level which is previous days close major pivot and it was a magenta candle and it had a bearish decline already it created a lower high and fell down with a magenta color candle in a daily chart we would say it is a go with flow short trade setup looking at 10 minute interval if we applied the checklist this should be a go with flow short trade setup on 10 minute interval but in that case we would have to look at longer term interval also we are not going to do that for precision entry we are going to look for this pivot support resistance wait for price to come back go down why we were waiting for price to come back because the market was going up that was one way to wait 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 until the market tells that okay the up move has completed and then look for a very low risk entry opportunity and you see by doing that we are entering the short here our stop is just above this pivot level above this high not above early range high this kind of entries using the intraday chart takes more time certainly much more time we have to sit in front of the computer which is not always desirable but those who enjoy doing that at least sometimes they may be able to take a long or short in this case short with a very minuscule stop one thing i want to clarify in q 
queue way, it is never a good idea to take a shot only based on the fine tune chart. That is not what I suggest also. I always suggest decide the direction beforehand and use the fine tune chart to actually enter the trend. And one exception is there that is for gap trend. And we saw that today there may be a gap down open on SPY. Anyway, I came to the fine tune chart and how the broad market ETFs or futures are moving during the day to explain whether we enter a trade immediately after open or we wait. If the market is going against our intended trade direction, we wait for market to pause and then take the trade as was in this case. On the other hand, if we had planned a bullish trade, and let's take an example of that. Let's say uh, what went up on Friday, X. Let's say we had for some reason thought maybe there is a big wall going to be built in the USA, nobody knows, but that is going to use US still, let's say that, let's assume that, and if it is going to use US still, maybe we are thinking that because there is some agreement, the government is open, maybe at least partially the wall will be built, but we are not going to decide our trade based on that. That is a news, good to know. Sometimes not so good to know actually, but let's say good to know, but we are not going to take a trade on that, but no harm keeping that in mind. For some reason, say we wanted to buy the stock US still. And that reason can be only one. It should be based on the unambiguous checklists. If we are following Q technique, the unambiguous checklists are under education entry checklist. For technical analysis, that is the only reason we are supposed to buy or short a trade. And then we will use Q vital for fundamental strength weakness, age for industry strength weakness. But technically, the only reason would be the entry checklist being met for the standard trade setups. Let's say we had such a possibility, long position possibility in X, and then we saw market started to go up on Friday, broke above early range high for all the market futures, and X was doing that at the same time. In that case, we are not going to wait for a pullback. The moment it breaks above early range high with a bullish shape candle, which would be this candle. Not this candle because long upper tail was there, not this candle because long upper tail was there, but this candle was bullish shape, closed above early range high, we'll take a long position here. And our stop would be just below recent low. It was a swing trade that one was trying to enter with precision using the fine tune template, not waiting for price to go above previous days high, which it did in this case actually, because it opened with a gap up. Green color pivot is pivot is high. In any case, we would enter the long at this price point for that day, the stop would be just below early range low. In some cases, you will find another major pivot just below early range low. In this case, if it is not adding too much to the risk, there is no harm putting stop just below the second pivot low. It is fine. But if it is very far away like this line, we don't do that. Then as price went up, it covered more than the risk distance. That is what we want to see. Every trade should give us more reward than the risk taken. And if we have at least 60% success rate at the end of the year, just trading stocks, just trading two trades a day, not day, two trades a week, we can make 20% profit on total capital, whatever be the amount of capital. Because we are here we are thinking about trading stocks. There is enough liquid stocks. So whatever be the capital, we can get at least 20%. If we want to take more risk, then of course the profit will go up. It can go up a lot actually by taking swing trades and risking small amount in each trade. And that was explained in 
one video it's very mathematical video but very simple mathematics that is in our youtube channel there should be something here making 40 to 60 percent annual return on total capital risking two percent on each trade swing trading stocks this this shows the mathematical calculation very simple assumes 2% risk in each trade assumes only 50 trades per year, assumes only 60% success rate. And of course, it assumes doing that repeatedly in discipline, with discipline. So that is how we can use the fine tune chart along with the market futures or market ETFs movement on the canvas of the fine tune chart, the respective finder to decide if to enter a trade immediately after open as it breaks beyond early range, as would be the case of X because its direction was same as the market movement in the morning session, or in case of MRK, you would wait because MRK would be a short trade ID. X. Now let's see if there is a possible trade setup in X. Actually, there is, I think so. Let me remove the sinking. Yes, by the way, the futures is dropping below the memory support lines. Again, I was listening to the market. The market was not listening to my market roundups. Let me change it to the hop on template. We are going to look at X. You still. This looks a viable stop stock. Why? Because it is meeting all the technical checklists. After a few days, Probably you all remember the checklist, but let me go through the checklist one more time. And the template on the right side is the daily template. And it has all the indicators I need or you need for all the trade setups. If I am thinking of X as a trend following trade, let me change to another template that will remove some indicators. Here I have all the indicators that I need to verify the checklist for trend following go with flow trend. Let me apply that. After a few days, nobody looks at the checklist. We are going to look for bull. This is supposed to be a bull. See, it has the horns and this looks like a bear. This is a bull, not a deer. So daily chart pattern should have higher high, higher low. I can say that it was going up, it came down. We know it came down because the traffic light candle color changed from yellow to red and it has one to the five bars in between and then it is starting to go up again. So we have higher low and we can say higher high or in anticipation of a higher high. Flow candle color, cyan, daily chart, yes, cyan. Daily candle shape, hollow or with long lower tail. Yes, it is hollow. Hollow candles are bullish because opening it, opening is at the lower end, close is at the upper end. So it is a hollow candle, that checklist is made. Relative performance, relative to the market, that line should be ascending. Not meta stock here. This is the copper color line. Let me remove the lines drawn. This line is ascending as of Friday. So that checklist condition is made. Daily movement indicator, everything is green. That is the last three, this band, movement band. You should have this band on your chart. Everything is green, that condition is made. Reward risk ratio, at least one or more. And weekly has only one requirement, 
candle color should be cyan and that calculation is different we call it backdrop weekly is indeed cyan and it was good it was friday because the week closed on that day sometimes during the day we are not sure whether the week is going to end with a bullish color or bearish color we have to make an approximation anticipation but this was friday so it is perfect we have a cyan color at the end of friday and weekly that condition is made now we have to see do we have enough reward for the risk taken in the trade in q system q technique we take the trade at the close of the market just before close of the market we don't have to wait for next day and for price to take out the high of the previous day we don't need that we can take the long at this price point we'll stop out just below recent low so this is our risk normally we try to book profit at the upper boundary for trend following trade and that is why our rule says if price is already close to the upper boundary we are not going to take a trend following long trend except in one case what is that exception if the market was in a downtrend and now reversing to uptrend the first trend following not first the first the first let me repeat again if the market was in a downtrend and now reversing the first trend following long trade setup that we get is expected to be at or close or even higher than the upper boundary i repeat again if the market was in a downtrend and it is now reversing it is giving us the first possible trend following long trade we expect the go with flow signal to come the first one very close or at or even higher than the upper boundary and that is an exception where we are allowed to take the trend following long trade even if it is at or close to the upper boundary which is the case in us still so we have to find another way of deciding where to take our profit one way could be and i always use that way also when price goes to a level that covers my risk distance if you watch the video how to make 20 40 or even higher percentage profit risking small amount in each trade trading stock no leveraged instrument assuming only 60 percent success rate it is more about discipline and a consistency in approach it just requires me to take at least as much profit as i am risking in each trade and have a success rate of 60 percent or higher so that should be my initial profit target one thing to notice that if i look to the left well it is coming to the previous high by that time i am able to reach my profit target that is fine with me at least partial profit will be booked at that time and if it price a price comes to this level most likely the technicals will be strong at that time fundamentals are strong now we will have a look at that shortly industry strong if all of those are remaining strong i am not going to exit full position i will wait and i will probably book some more profit at the next logical resistance the memory trend line resistance just below 28 and there is a memory resistance in weekly also whichever is hit first approached first i can book additional profit or because i have already booked profit i will change to the hop off template to see where the trailing stop would be at that time if price is coming near 25 26 the magenta dot will most likely go above my entry price so i can just leave the remaining position with the trailing stop using the q protection signal what will i actually do if it is coming to the memory resistance and if i see the industry is weakening i will book profit i'm talking about short term trading all our discussions are usually on short term trading so if it is hitting the memory resistance which is near the white direction line and i see the industry steel industry is weakening at that time i will book profit i'm not that greedy i'm okay with this quite large move relative to the risk 
so x in fact has a technical setup now if we look at the checklist conditions after a while you will not look at the checklist conditions it will come to you in few seconds now other than the checklist conditions which are necessary and sufficient but no harm having something more on top of the necessary and sufficient conditions and we had some of them on friday we had heavy activity that was not mentioned in the checklist for go with flow trade setup but we had that and when a stock goes up with heavy activity and it is breaking above trend line resistance that is a good thing that is bullish so we had some extra reason to take the long also soon to be released we are calculating the pressure not just the volume it includes the displacement and the push you can say it's the pressure if the pressure extreme is there bullish is green or cyan and bearish is red or magenta in this case we had high volume and high pressure meaning big move also all relative to the pattern normal pattern of the stock so we had two extra reasons to take a long position on friday will it make profit nobody knows but i know for sure that technically it is giving me a trade setup as per go with flow trade setup checklist it has some additional conditions and let's look at the industry that was technical in q vital i can analyze any stock in any market any exchange if i click the play button thomson reuters icon is online it is going to reach to the icon platform thomson reuters initially it is going to get data about the stock it has got data about the stock now it is going to get the pr stocks based on my relationship that i have highlighted i had sector here let me change it to industry for the usa market industry relationship is enough sometimes if i'm looking at a singapore stock very small country very small exchange i may need to expand the relationship to sector to get reasonable number of stocks in the peer list though the comparison would not be as accurate as it would be for industry peer relationship that is our default go to and we have all these stocks that was the second step carried out by q vital in third step it retrieved data about these stocks and calculated the vital statistics three steps and let's look at the vital statistics x we look at a stock and think of it as fundamentally strong based on very few things and very simple straightforward things either valuation or earnings growth or dividend these are the key factors we buy a stock either it is good value which is true in case of x and we know that from the color just like in the charts either q global or q elite red magenta is weak cyan green is strong so valuation cyan we don't need to actually look at the score sometimes too much nitpicking is not required this is not not that we need to have 79 it is okay to have 76 also so just the color coding is enough it has good value for short term trading is not of that much used to see how it did three years ago one year ago two year ago recent quarter is enough and you can see last three quarters it has good earnings growth bright green color is good enough very small dividend so we are not going to buy this stock for dividend but it has good valuation it has nice earnings growth it has good earnings quality in fact the short squeeze is showing it has a short squeeze potential again cyan means it is good so it must be having a short squeeze potential if you look at all the stocks in this industry and let me double click on the valuation column header to sort them we see there are several other value stocks also if we try to look for the best combination of value and earnings growth normally just one of them is enough either good value or earnings growth normally we will not look for both because it is difficult to find both but 
in this case x in fact has good valuation and among the peer stocks the value stocks at least the best possible earnings growth as well so fundamentally if i had to choose a stock to buy in steel industry in the american market i would choose x what about the industry we can start from top down or we could directly go to industry or we could even go to stock let me in this case start with stock in q edge search for x there are many stocks with x so let me go down to x and i can click on the peer analysis button that will give me only x peers and we we know already it is having good valuation and good growth and that also selected the industry and instantly we know the industry is doing very well it was weak earlier it is strong now as i keep on saying sector is too broad we don't need to look at sector because at the sector level different industries may cancel each other we have steel in material sector we also have paper products wood products they don't necessarily move together so looking at the sector may not be effective it's good to have a broad idea of what is going on but for trading purpose industry is the right level to start from so we found a stock that has fundamental strength the best fundamental stock in the peer group we have the industry as a very strong industry turning around technically we have a trade setup so we should take a trade we could take the trade using stock we could take the trade using call options or synthetic stock position or selling the put maybe selling put vertical where is the earnings let's look at that okay earnings is nearby if earnings is nearby our standard guideline is and my own approach is not to buy the stock unless i want to hold the stock for long term and if i really want to hold the stock long term i don't care about earnings then i should not buy the stock i should simply sell a put out of the money put maybe a little bit out of the money so i want the stock to go up but if it goes down i'm okay i'm getting the stock at a discount if i really want to buy the stock the best way should be to sell the put and before earnings the volatility will be very high but i am not talking about long term trading so much in the forum very few of my posts in the forum are about long term investment the market roundups are also not about long term investment so much so for short term trading our standard guideline is because earnings is very close it's best to take the trade using short put vertical if the stock goes up will make money because of the price move and also because of volatility crash if the stock stays same place we will still make money if the stock moves little bit lower we will still move make money again because we may be having a short leg just below the low of friday let's say 21 short 21 by 20 i don't know how much premium we can get if we are shorting put verticals in that way we will try to get a one is to uh, two is to three two is to three reverted let's try it out i don't know if i can get the options prices now mm, trading app launcher option station pro let's see if we try to create a short put vertical sell 21 by 20 what is the reward risk ratio let me drink some water lemon soda i like lemon soda so i have a cup of lemon soda in front of me bubbles are still coming out i like to look at that okay 
Now earnings is coming out soon. Now one thing I suggest, if this was Friday, it is not Friday. If it is Friday and earnings is on Friday, it's not a good idea to either short put vertical or buy call or buy put, buy call, buy put, short put vertical, short put. Just, just on the earnings date, expiry on some day is not a good idea. Sometimes the move comes after some time. Here we have four days left. First February earnings was on 30th Jan. How many days it is? After 30th Jan, two more days. So that's fine. Let's let's say if we are going to sell put option, two more days is fine. And let's try to reduce the. We don't need to see so many strikes. Currently, price is at 22, and we are going to take a bullish position. So sell. 22, which side is sell? Bit side is sell. Sell 22 and buy one below. So this is our strike. Our max profit 45, max loss 55. If we take the natural price that is hitting the offer or bid, then it is 42, 58, 42, 58. What is the ratio coming to? 42 by 58.72, that is fine. During market hours, it may change a little bit, but if it was around 60%, 65%, that is fine. 60 to 70, usually you will get about 60%. For a short, put vertical or short call vertical. If we are not happy with this two is to three, usually two is to three reward risk ratio for out of the money short put vertical or short call vertical, we could try to get a one is to one reward risk ratio vertical by putting the strikes around the current price. And that is very easy to do also. So currently prices at $22, so I'm going to sell 23 put by 21 put uh, by right you can see it's about one is to one 110 max profit 90 max loss if stock closes in between at the middle of the price 22 we still have no loss if it goes up we have no loss if it slightly goes down probably no loss just before earnings that is the standard guideline and options can be complicated we don't need to make life so complicated already we have many complex things in life trading doesn't have to be so complicated we can just rely on simple call or put in fact if earnings was not nearby X could be traded with a call option. And there are many ways to choose the call option. One is to choose at the money. Or if you are targeting a profit of level of say $24, you could buy the 24 call option. It can be extremely profitable. Don't go and try it out with real money first. <laughs> Normally, people suggest buying the at the money, 22 call option. The reason is if the stock goes across the strike price, it will, the profit will expand very fast because the delta will change very fast. So that is a sound approach to buy at the money. But if the stock reverses, it loses money very fast. Though it end up, it may end up with large profit, the psychological stress is quite big. For small $100 position, it doesn't matter. But as you trade more and you want to invest more money, even if the end result is good, every day 30% variance going up, going down, that can be stressful. One way to avoid that is to just trade verticals. Always the reward risk is known. It will not go up by 30%. It will not go down by 50% each day. It's easy way. 
no stress at all. Another way could be to buy in the money option. That is also very sound approach, no stress. If the price is at $22 and let's see where the stop loss is, that may be a good way to place stop loss. Say 1990, 20 is our stop loss, let's say. So you could buy, instead of just choosing randomly, you could buy 20 call, 20 call and see how the stock is. By the way, just before earnings, it's never a good idea to buy call or put, never. So we are not going to do that now, but if earnings was not there and if you wanted to take a long position, one position, one way could be to buy 20 call and let's see what would be the delta. 20 call, the delta would be 91. So it would move almost same as the stock. Meaning it will not shoot up suddenly, it will not go down suddenly. That will be easy to handle psychologically and it's very nice delta almost moving in sync with the stock. That would be a good choice. If you want to trade out of the money option, one way is to decide your target price. And I should change it to, I don't know. I keep on seeing this message. I really don't know which password it is talking about. It just tells you, God knows who is sending that message. It tells your password is expiring, doesn't tell which password and I have so many passwords like you. Do. In any case, if we are thinking that we will hit this price target, this previous high $24 and if it was not earnings season and we were going to buy a call option, we could buy 24 call and how to decide that? Let me share a very nice way of deciding. Let's see. Look at the monthly options. For February monthly option, the expected move is plus minus 2.7. Current price is 22. So that takes us to, if it is going up, it is possible that it will go to 2.7 plus 22, 24.7. 24.7 and that is above our target price. So we could actually buy buy 24 call option, 24 call option at 37 cents ask price. Delta is very small, but there is some chance. How much? Not much really. Delta is 25, 25% chance. But that is assuming mathematical calculation. We are not trading based on mathematical calculation. We are trading based on chart analysis, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, industry analysis. So. This is just a guideline. I'm not going to trade looking at this. I'm going to trade looking at the chart and saying in how many days? 18 days, am I going to hit this high? And it seems very likely, nothing is guaranteed, but it seems very likely that in 18 days from now, it will hit $24. And if that happens, this delta will be 25 to it will go to, currently it is, you can see, 52, it will go to 52. The price will go up from 37 to about, I don't know, because it is earnings, it may be inflated, but it will go up by at least double. So if you think it is going to hit your target price within the current monthly expiry, which should have two to three weeks left at least. And how you know, you look at the chart pattern and also look at the, Expected move. You can find it in Trade Station. You can find it in Thinkorswim. Or you can simply add up the current strike put and call options. So $1 plus $137, $237. It's slightly less than $274, but that's fine. Even $237, if we add to $22, it is going above our target price, $24. Am I suggesting you could buy 24 call? I will refine that little bit. I am going to suggest if you think based on chart pattern and the expected move of the current monthly option, we should have three weeks left, let's say. Let's give it more time because the stock sometimes doesn't move after we buy. It seems to be moving at the point when I am buying, it looks good. 
higher high higher low weekly sign everything sign industry but the moment i buy the stock decides not to move so let's give it more time let's move to the next expiry enough time now and now if you see 24 strike that is our target price is ask 63 cents delta is slightly more but that doesn't matter now we are going to buy the call at 63 cents if we are allowed to risk two percent of our account let's say we have a small account let's say i don't know ten thousand dollar account and options allow us to trade with very small accounts also of course i am going to show only options that has extreme high liquidity so it can be traded with large accounts also so 24 we know it is extreme high liquidity because we can see the bid ask spread is extremely narrow that happens only when the liquidity is very high we really don't need to look at the here the open interest volume is zero because market is not open we just need to look at the bid ask spread if it is narrow we are good to go and a sound way could be to buy 24 strike expiring in march if earnings was not there so coming back again x has a possible trend following long trade setup we could buy the stock if earnings was not there or we could buy the call option at the money but that may be stressful because of the 30 percent or 40 percent down move every day or we could buy in the money one very objective way is to buy the strike at the stop loss price using q protection signal or the unique way i think unique way that i described at the expected move of the current monthly option to the current price see if it is hitting your target price and then go to the next expiry and buy that call option it is out of the money but there is very high likelihood it will be hit but in this case we will not buy that option because earnings is nearby we are hitting 9 a.m let me just explain the gold gap day trade setup that i said i will look at in the weekly market roundup and sometimes trade station takes longer than usual maybe because the webinar is running because don't know maybe because i mentioned think or swim okay that's why it's good to always have a backup <laughs> yeah, stop. Yeah. the q system is on meta stock also so if one software is angry with me i fall back on the other one this is gld weekly daily at a glance template we had a clear gap up open on friday we have a gap trade setup and we would then move to the intraday template the fine-tuned template precise chart entry and this is the template and sometimes color doesn't come so maybe meta stock is also not happy with me i have to force it to tell the open with this precise entry five minute template please okay very easy same simple concept price opened at the blue price level which was much higher than previous days high our gap initiation premise is that the gap should be significant which it was then early range high was formed as price was going above that we'll take a long position stop will be just below recent low in this case there was no other pivot line nearby so we don't have to move price anywhere else this was our stop once the risk distance was covered we were going to book at least partial profit what i mentioned in the market roundup is that we could initiate it as a day trade gap trade setup is a day trade setup and once our profit target was hit and if i could go back to the daily chart we could see at the end of the day it closed decisively above the memory resistance line looking at that 
it would be okay to hold on to partial position. Another technique would be if I traded the stock with GLD ETF, book full profit, use part of the money to buy call option, part of the profit. So even if that call option vanishes to zero, we would still have profit. And if the ETF goes up, we'll increase our profit a lot. Let's, I don't know if I can open E-mini. Trade station is not helping. That is fine. We already looked at E-mini. It seems the percentages are deteriorating. Not much yet, not 2% yet. Market is not, but it is down. As I mentioned in the market roundup, the same commit is still true. Market has recovered significantly for, for, for four weeks, paused for one week. It is in a location where it is not clear which direction to take a trade unless you have a very clear idea about a stock industry like X. In fact, Blackberry is another stock. I, I shared it earlier and it is in the forum also. You may go through it. I will not go through it. This is the forum address. Blackberry looks like an interesting stock buy opportunity also. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thanks a lot for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great week and trade profitably. Thank you.